if you would ask me two or three years ago, do you think realty income will drop 15 plus percent inside of a single year? I probably would have said, no way. They're way too strong. However, things can change drastically in a relatively short time. And so REITs on the whole, including even the great, almost invincible realty income, have seen major pullbacks in price. Some REITs more drastically than others, but nonetheless, realty income is not fully immune. What are the reasons why this might have happened? Well, twofold. One, real estate is perceived as being in a bubble with there being some perceived risk for commercial real estate, especially office space. And those real estate fears in general will affect all real estate based businesses. But the other major component is interest rates, which is also kind of a two sided coin with how it affects uh, REITs like realty income and it's a double whammy. So let's use the time machine and go back um, a couple years before they started hiking interest rates. Okay. Realty income was trading in the 60s into the low or even uh, mid 70s. Pretty much all of 2021 and 2022. Okay. There was a sharp drop, like everything else, in the fall of 2022. The whole market kind of went crazy around that time. But Realty income recovered pretty darn quickly. But this year has been a different story. Interest rates have gone up. The outlook on real estate has gone down. Now, all REITs do two things for the most part. They all carry debt and they all pay a dividend. They're required to to maintain the uh, REIT uh, tax status, okay? So they're required to pay out the vast majority of their income to the shareholders. While at the same time, debt is one of the only two ways they can really realistically acquire more properties. So they're carrying about 18 billion in total debt. Um, well, we can go to the quarterly and see actually the more recent number. So it's actually close, it's over 19 and a half billion now, okay? So the problem is a couple years ago, the interest rate was quite low. Um, you know, the, the Fed rate was basically zero or negligible. And so they were able to borrow at very low rates for the majority of this debt that they have on the books now. The problem they're going to face is at some point either to keep borrowing more to keep expanding, they'll have to pay higher rates, or when any of their older debt comes due for refinancing, they'll have to either pay it off or renew, um, you know, refinance at a much, much higher rate than what they got the debt for in the past. So that's one prong of it. So that could compress their funds from operations, which is what they use to pay out those dividends. Now, the other aspect of this is the dividend itself, okay? Back in the days when the price was in the 60s or 70s, and there have been dividend raises uh, now, in between then and now, um, but when the price was you know, a good 20% higher, the dividend yield was actually lower. But on the open market, this seemed like a good deal because treasury bonds basically were paying nothing. Okay. But realty income, you could at least get three and a half, four percent for your money. And again, because the interest rates were quite low, people weren't really worried about 
oh, what are they going to do, um, you know, if they have to borrow more money or what if they have to refinance? That's not really a concern when interest rates are so low. And basically, it seemed like a much better deal than a bond. So some portion of people who just want yield of some kind, but for what they perceive as low risk, probably got into realty income instead of being in bonds because it just, you know, the yields were not there for, um, for bonds. So now that interest rates have gone up and you can get, you know, three and a half, four percent, whatever on much, much safer bonds or, you know, in some cases, four and a half percent on a high yield savings account, five percent on a CD. Why would you want to stick your money into realty income if it was only yielding three and a half or four percent? Because it's a it's an equity, right? It has risk. Granted, it's one of the best managed REITs in existence with, you know, a lot of diversified tenants, etc. But the juice needs to be worth the squeeze if you're just looking for yield, which as people kind of head closer to retirement, they just want that steady stream of cash flow. Now, that being said, if you believe in realty income long term, and granted they do raise their dividend, that's something you don't get from a bond, right? Bonds pay a set yield, right, at the time they're issued. And that means you'll never, um, like if you buy a bond that, that yields 4% and interest rates go up tomorrow, you're still only getting 4%. But with realty income, today's yield on cost is 5.69%. And if they were to raise their dividend tomorrow, guess what? You get that extra money on every share you own. So from that perspective, it does present an interesting opportunity. If you Again, if you believe that realty income can continue its impeccable track record of dividend payouts and dividend increases like it has since inception. The question is, is the juice worth the squeeze at this point? From a value perspective, um, they are at an all-time low multiple of um, uh, price to FFO from what I understand. Uh, they are at still what I consider to be kind of a premium to their balance sheet. Shareholders equity sitting here at $31.1 billion, while their market cap is $38 billion. However, if any REIT deserves a premium on their net asset value, it's probably realty income. Also, um, that shareholders equity is not all tangible assets like with a lot of other REITs. They do have almost $9 billion of goodwill and intangibles. So the actual number, if you only go based off tangible book, it's more like it's like 50% premium instead of um, instead of like a 25 or 30% premium. So that's something to keep in mind with realty income. But again, they probably have the most consistent track record of any REIT of slowly and steadily raising their dividend. And since inception, they have beaten the overall market. But I would caution you against performance chasing like that because the dividend raises in the recent years have seemed to be a little bit slow. Uh, let me see if they have the, um, the dividend info here dividend per share so i mean look at the dividend per share this is the most recent this is further in the past it's not going up all that fast and that's this is the um annual number it's not really increasing 
all that much. Actually, that might be the quarterly number now that I now that I look at it. But still, yeah, that's the quarterly number. Sorry about that. But yeah, it's not really. I mean, they do increase it multiple times a year, typically. So you'll see like each quarter it goes up. But the increase is like 0.636 cent. Uh, um, oh, sorry, uh, 63.6 cents per share to 63.7 cents per share. Like they're raising it a tenth of a cent per share in some instances. So while it's an increase and you have a lot of shares, it, it's, I guess, kind of nice. I mean, but a tenth or two tenths of a of a cent per share dividend increase like that's not really keeping pace with inflation so that's something to keep in mind um but still a, a dividend raise is a dividend raise at least it's not going the other direction so anyway that's really where things are at with realty income and that's why it's down this year comment below if you own realty income Make sure that you like the video, subscribe to the channel if you want more. I look forward to hearing from you. Hop in the Discord, link is in the description. Have a fabulous day, everybody.